What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcast for the next episode of Weekly Indie Newcomer, the weekend series where you and I take a look at an indie game. It's been bouncing around my brain over the course of the last week. This week, we're taking a look at Cave Blazers, which is kind of a platforming top-to-bottom RPG where the goal is to go deeper down into the dungeon. If you've played Spelunky, if you've played Vagante, if you've played any of those sorts of games, you'll get the rough idea. This one is a little bit more RPG influenced, which puts it more in the realm of Vagante, but it's very, very fast-paced. Your average playthrough in this game is like five minutes. And you'll make it down two or three layers, and then you'll just get murdered. On top of that, this one spices up the formula a little bit by making it so that there are AI-controlled adventurers running around the dungeon that will sometimes fight you, steal your loot, and mess with you the entire time as well. So imagine Spelunky or Vagante if there were other players bouncing around trying to murder you at the same time as you trying to go down to the bottom. I don't know if you can do that in Spelunky or Vagante. It's not something that I'm privy to. And if you can, well, then you'll get the idea even better because you'll have seen it before. But in this one, they're AI-controlled, and so the other adventurers are... Pretty terrifying. They can be difficult if you're not careful around. I tend to just avoid them just in case because they can whack you real, real good. So without further ado, let's go ahead and play ourselves some Cave Blazers because I'm sure you didn't come here to listen to me blather on about nothing. Play your game! And so this is the game right here. We've got a couple of different things that we can do. We actually have a charge up spell that's not going to be available until we find a specific item in the dungeon. This guy over here sasses us and gives us about like a bunch of bullshit if we talk to him. We can swing our sword like so. And then on top of that, we can use the right stick in order to fire our bow. That is correct. I did say right stick. I prefer playing this game with a controller. I can't play platformers on a keyboard. I just can't do it. I'm not good at it. And then right button's going to allow us to go inside the dungeon and get started with our rat tail. It looks like our character has a rat tail when he goes indoors. Ooh, there's a sword right here. Would you like the spike sword? Yes, I would like the spike sword. Let's go to our inventory. Spike sword does 16 to 18 damage which I think is by far superior to the rusty sword that we have right here. It shares the same speed, and then it has a 10% chance to poison targets. This game does have a horde of items in it right now. Not like a huge amount, but I'm looking forward because you'll see the items rotate a bit. Those right there, they drop gems and gold and all kinds of stuff on the ground. I don't know what that little shy guy is doing right there, but it's not messing with me. And now he's... Oh no, we've already got another adventure. And then I stepped on a rune, went out and stepped on a rune. What did that give us? Blessing of Riches. It means the enemies now drop gold. That's good because you can buy some pretty unique stuff down in the dungeon if you're sneaky about it. I don't want to fight you, so stay where you are. Leave me alone, other adventurer. I have no time for your shenanigans. This game does commit the cardinal sin. A cardinal sin for me, anyways. It has damage on touch, which is probably one of the first things I would talk about. I don't like damage on touch. I don't want to beat that horse any further. Anybody that's been around the channel for a while knows that I hate damage on touch in games like Metroidvanias and things like that. I feel like the enemies should have to connect. Oh, shit. I think he's coming after us. Oh, there's two of them now. Even better. And they don't seem to be particularly interested in murdering each other, either. I'm going this way. You guys can do whatever the hell it is you want to do. There's no fall damage, so feel free. Yeah, that's why I didn't mess with him. Oh, nope, that's mine. I think I got it. You got to be careful. Oh, I got it. Okay. So you got to be very, very careful in this game because it doesn't pause when you go in your inventory, and so bad guys can run up on you and just totally take you out while you're looking at stuff in your inventory, and it's not fun at all. Get the fire bow right there. That's going to swap out for our normal bow. It does a little less damage, but it has like a 15% chance to set things on fire. I love the wall jumping in this game. The first thing I wanted to point out is that the controls feel very, very on. And that's an incredibly important thing for a platforming game. Metroidvanias and first-person shooters, the controls are among the most important things you can possibly have. Like, I don't care if the controls kind of suck in a real-time, I'm sorry, in a turn-based strategy game. Doesn't Yeah, he's got like grenades on the end of his attack device, which has me a little bit nervous. He's doing a pretty good job against those shy guys, too, so I think I'll probably just try and stay away from him. He doesn't look hostile, though. It doesn't look like he's trying to murder us. That one might be over there. Every single one of these guys has a different AI. Some of them are, like, hostile. Some of them will leave you alone. Some of them will be chill. Some of them will not. I'm going to pick up that meat right there because if you can't get meat... Oh, he stepped on... What happened to him? I think he stepped on spikes. Oh, a sticky bomb. Yes, please. Ah... Yeah, you can blow up sections of the dungeon too, by the way, if you wanted to terraform a little bit. So let's say that I go to the left and there's like a challenge over here that I'm just not down for. I could come back over here. Watch out for those spike pits. And then I could take a bomba. I could drop it right there. And that'll blow a chunk out of the dungeon so that I can shoot at some of these critters down. I'm going to... See if maybe it's possible to liquidate a few of these enemies before this gets any more rowdy. Ah, the bat bit me on my foot. He bit me on my foot so hard it launched me up into the air and also took my health from me. 
I'm not okay with this. I'm losing health at far too rapid of a rate. But yeah, I don't like attack on touch, so... Oh, he wants to murder me. Shit. Okay, let's get out of here then. I don't have the HP to fight another AI, so I'm not even going to try. Get a little bit of cash right there. We got a new blessing. I'm just going to try and outrun him to the dungeon exit, and there it is. We don't have a lot of health right now, but we do have healing items, so we'll be okay. We're on the temple approach. Oh, apparently my blessing makes it so that I shoot little Kamehameha wave things every now and again. Yeah. I didn't know how big he was going to be when he attacked. Oh, he's on fire now, though. I'm going to go ahead and smack him up a little bit with my sword. And it looks like he dropped a skull that was inside of him. He was storing people's craniums inside of his orifices. Not kind. 20 health right there. And then 40 health from the meat that we picked up previously. We've got the Tesla Blessing. Once every five seconds, fire a lightning bolt when using your range. And is it the first one after five seconds? I hope so. That means that I'll be able to plan it out a little bit better. You can parry enemies by swinging at the exact same time that they do. That's what that tang sound is that you're hearing. Oh, shit. This guy is not going to be happy to meet us, I don't think. We do have a better weapon than he does, though. So, yeah, we should be able to murder him, although it is going to be costly in terms of health. Not much of an option, though. He kind of gave us no choice. Okay, we probably had, like, a slight choice. We probably could have walked away or something. But I felt murder in my veins. Greetings, Mr. Slime. I would like to introduce you to my blade. Ha-ha. Blade meet slime. Hello. Ooh, we've got randomized potions, just like in every other roguelite, in case you were wondering. So if you like randomized potions, then, hey, the game has got your back, G. It's got you covered. Probably going... Ooh, we got a royal ring right there. Oh, that guy's got, like, magic powers and shit. I don't feel good about this. He's, like, glowing Super Mario style. We also got a lightning. I think I'm going to avoid him. I don't want to play around. Let me chill over here for a second. We got a royal ring. A ring that's given to heirs by the throne of Elysian Fields. We get five magic damage. I'm going to equip it because we got nothing else to go in the slot. We got a lightning orb. Creates a lightning field where it is thrown, causing 15 damage. I might be able to do something with this. I don't think he wants to mess with me. I think he's trying to run. I think he just blew himself up, too. On like a... Oh, yeah, he got a bubble bomb. Bubble bombs are kind of a pain. So there are traps inside the dungeon. That was a bubble bomb right there. It suspends you in place and basically allows people to beat you to death. This game, they should actually strongly consider adding, like, multiplayer hosted servers to it or anything like that. Because being able to invade other people's games and, like, mess with them would be pretty entertaining. I wouldn't hate on it. It would spruce up this game and definitely add a little bit of something to it. Yeah, so far, what is that? A stun field? What does a stun field do? Stuns an entity for five seconds when thrown. You throw it using your range controls. Cool. I actually hope they rebind that to where they should give you another inventory slot for thrown items. And then they can just bind it to a different button. Because as of right now, thrown weapons are a little bit weird. Because you got to swap to them on the fly. And it's... I guess if you already had it in your... Oh, no, he's coming back for revenge. And he got it. And that's why you should be careful, because they will absolutely... Don't go to dead ends, basically, is what I would tell you. Don't go into dead ends, because almost always an adventurer will end up inside of there and murder you. In fact, I think the adventure is a little aim body right now. They could be toned down slightly. Not a lot, because as of right now, they're threatening, but beatable. And they're quite fatal, actually, a lot of the time. However, I do think they're aim body with their bows. And so I've had those guys put, like, three shots on me with a bow flying midair while I'm moving flying midair. Stuff like that, and it's just... It can be a bit of a pain. You can lose a lot of health that way, and so that's one of the few things that I would mention right there, is that maybe in terms of the early access, they should tone down the bow skills of some of the... I don't know if I can make that right there. Yeah, I was hoping I might be able to, but no such luck. We'll drop him, and I guess we'll just forget about that chest over there, because I don't think I can get back up. There's no grappling hooks or anything like that in the game just yet. Oh, he got me. I went in for a range kill when I should have gone in for a melee kill. It was all my fault. What's that thing on the ground over here? Oh, gold. Hooray! At least it's the type of dungeon where there's just gold laying around on the ground. It could be a lot worse. But I'd say the things for early access alpha that it's in right now... I'd say the things they got locked down, the controls are solid. Things feel like... The things that I would hope would be in place by the alpha are in place. Like, there are bare basic minimums to platforming games that need to be upheld. And if they're not, like, in the first iteration of the game, it makes me worry that maybe the developers don't know what goes into a successful game of the genre that they're developing. And the fact that those things are in the proper place is a very, very good thing. It bodes well. I'm going to get him a couple times. Oh, got him too. When he comes up over this ledge. Ah, Mr. Sword! 
I don't, I'm not creative. I can't name my sword anything better than Mr. Sword. There we go. We got him that time around. Treasure chest over here, too. There we go. I was wondering if I could get that to work. I love the curvature of the bow, the, the way that it, like, drops as you fire it. I don't know why I like that so much, but it makes me happy. Fire bow in there again. Not really what I was looking for. Not my favorite item, but it'll have to do for right now. We got a wand as well. What the wands do is every time you kill an enemy, it charges up a little bit. So in the top left-hand corner, you'll see my sword, you'll see my bow, and you'll see my health. There's now a new little meter that's been added underneath my health. It's going to fill up with yellow as I kill stuff. And you're going to see it get like plus 10, for example, right there. That's not me leveling up or anything like that. That's me getting spell points so that I can trigger my bow and take stuff out. There are a lot of adventurers around, and that concerns me. And that one looks a little bit hostile. And not towards other adventurers, which is what I would hope. Yeah, he's coming after me. He wants me something fierce, so... I'm gonna get that poison ring, and then I think I'm gonna... Get the hell out of here. Oh, there's a big treasure chest, though. Gonna get me with the temptation, I can tell already. We hit bedrock, there's a blessing right there. Kind of depends on what that adventurer decides to do. I'm going to get the blessing. Oh, it makes my arrows explodey. Okay. We've got a poison ring, a ring of thorns with an enchanted emerald. Po okay, so anybody that hits us might get poison. And then we've got 10 to max health. I'm going to use my apple real fast to get some health back. And then straight through the door for us. Temple Approach. Let's keep an eye out. I don't want to fall on any spikes right now or anything like that. You can totally play this game like balls to the wall if you want to as well. I don't know what that blessing did. We'll let the check on it in just a minute. We got another gold wand right there. Like, you're under no obligation to stop and fight like anything in this game. Like, it's perfectly fine if you don't want to. There we go. Got him dealt with. I don't want to mess around too. I'm going to go from the other side. It'll be quicker. Be quicker, easier, and less painful, and also less embarrassing to my platforming skills. God, I love wall jumping. Wall jumping is the best. Ooh, another red apple. Yes, please. And then we got a poison sword, which is exactly what it says on the tin. It does one less damage than the thing we already had, but it poison en poisons enemies on occasion. I would like the swords to have graphics added. Just a little suggestion. When you get new weapons, they should change in your character's hand to look a little bit different. In my opinion, that's the hallmark of a really, really good adventure RPG game is do your weapons and armor change around when you equip them. Like, the other mechanics are cool, but it's one of those, like, make the game look and feel better things that if it's not present in a game, I can't ignore that, and it tends to bug me. I don't know if there's plans. We got an arcane box. An arcane box, you gotta watch out for those arcane boxes, especially when you're in the red light district. But I don't know if the arcane, I'm sorry, I know what the arcane box does, I've had it before. You throw it and it does a random thing. So hopefully it's hostile. Oh, our wand is charged. Well, that's a good thing for us. I can shoot magic missiles at people when it's charged. Depends if you really enjoy magic missiles or not. Oh, he killed me and then he stole my health. Little bastard. I'd like it if the AIs looked a little bit different too. If they had a different colored shirt or something. Because when you get into a little scrum right there in the middle, it can be difficult to tell which one's you. And which one's him, and if you're facing the wrong direction, you can't really parry. Extra bomb right there. Probably got enough ordnance right now to, like, blow ourselves all the way down to the bottom of the dungeon if we wanted to. Combine that with our innate sense of flexibility, and I think we'll be in a pretty good state. I'll take the brown potion, although if it's dookie inside of a crate, I'm going to be very upset. I'm going to let him bypass... Oh, shit. We may have an issue here. Yeah, we got an issue. We've got an issue. Ugh, go through the floor. The floor doesn't use common, so... The little platforms, they don't use common RPG, like action RPG platformer rote. Essentially, they... Ugh. So anyways, essentially, you, got, you just press down and you fall through them instantly. And normally, I'm used to pressing down and A at the same time, and so... I'm sure it's probably rebindable or something. Less adventures would be appreciated as well. They show up really, really quickly, and they're all over the place. And considering they basically represent a chance at instantly dying, maybe a few less adventures. Right now, it seems like they pop through a little bit frequently. But maybe that's just me being a whiny little bitch. Always possible. Oh, wait. I will take that heart. Thank you. 
Your heart belongs to me, the heart of the Dungion. Set him on fire for him. Wait, why was he on fire? I don't have a fire bow. Huh. Maybe he's flammable and my arrows are made out of flint or something and they struck a spark on like one of his buckles. And then he's like, no, you found my weakness striking sparks off of my buckles. How dare you, sir? We can get a brown potion from right here if we really want to, but it'll cost us 70 bucks. And 70 bucks, I ain't got. The pomegranate bow. I have no idea what that's going to do for me, but we'll check it out in a minute. I don't know what I just did or what that sparkly thing was. That's an object that I've never seen before in the game, so I hit it a couple times in the hopes that maybe it would do something useful. Ooh. Okay, I got my ass blown off. That's funsies. I love getting my ass blown off. I'll check that pomegranate bow in just a minute when there's no players around. Obsidian ring, I think, gives us... Oh, it reduces all of our damage taken by two. That's pretty sweet. I'm going to eat that apple, and then the pomegranate bow fires an arrow that explodes, dropping a cluster of small bombs. Will not work at close range. Huh. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, you can't point blank people with it. So, kind of a useful little item. I don't think he's hostile. We'll probably leave him alone. I'm sure they're going to implement traps and all kinds of other stuff into the game later on. Yup. You're getting blown up now, pal. I got the stuff. You better retreat. Better fall back, dude. You don't know me like... Oh, I can blow myself up, too. That's unfortunate. I have to watch out for that. Wow, that does a lot of damage, though. Like, that's how you get rid of an adventure right there. Man. What's the HP on this guy? Because he has taken quite a few. There we go. Finally got him. I'd also like it if you could jack people's loot after you killed them. That would also add an incentive to fight these guys if they're going to remain so difficult and nasty. It would add an incentive to me to, like, hang out and try and kill them. A bunch of gems flying all over the place. Doesn't look like there's much inside of there, so I'm not going to concern myself with it. That guy's poison. i got to decide if he's a murderer or not. Consume that heart. Bright red potion could do all manner of terrible thing to me, so I don't know. I'm just going to skeef around him. I don't think it's worth it to get involved. Hopefully he'll disengage and... Oh, shit. Disengage and fall back. Invincibility. Oh man. They didn't give me the music, so I gotta give it to myself. And that's the point at which somebody'd be like, I bet you're pretty good at giving it to yourself. I'm a funny guy. All my jokes are from the seventh grade. I wonder if I can kill that slime from right here. You can only fire diagonal up left and right. So you're sort of subdivided by 45 degree angles here. And the bombs don't look like they bounce in the same way that some of the other things bounce. I'm gonna grenade the shit out of these guys. Oh, I zapped him. Hell yeah. How often do I get to zap people? Because that was the shit. I want to zap people all day long. I also can't get that bat now. There we go. Perfect. That pro level Rambo action. Okay. That moderately kind of middle range Rambo action. Yeah, I was worried that might happen. That's the problem with firing bombs up into the air is they tend to fall back down. Those damn rules that judge, ooh, melee damage and melee knockback, yes. We're already probably gonna die anyway, so I might as well, might as well pick up all these items here. I'm gonna blast my way through right here, I think. Perfect. Oh man, unless it's a dead end. Then I'm gonna feel like an idiot. Alright, never mind. I just wasted a whole bunch of explosives accomplishing nothing. And now there's an adventure in my way. So that's pretty fun. I'm gonna launch grenades at him until he ceases and also desists breathing. Because he's looking kind of hostile right now. I think he's gotta get to like that spot right there in order to mess with me properly. I'm just gonna spam bombs on him. This is the best thing I got going for me right now. There, he's been murdered, but I've been hit with some kind of poison. So unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to live with that for a bit. Yeah, you ain't coming after me, dude. I'm just laying it down on you. 
I'm going Contra on that ass. Stop trying it. Just don't do it. You're making mistakes right now. Mistakes that probably won't be wrecked. You just jacked my potion, too. Oh, no! The playing field has been evened. I don't particularly like even playing fields because they end up with me dead on a floor right there. They end up with me getting quite murdered. We'll give it another go. I do like this game. Everything feels tight, but it seems like the sort of game... I think it's called Cave Blazers for a reason. You're supposed to, like, fly through the dungeon as fast as possible and just ignore everything that gets... Let's give that a try as a strategy here. Ooh, we got a big chest right here. What does that do? It looks like it just gives me more treasure. $150 in a treasure chest. Yup. I love dungeons that give me gold nuggets and $150. I'll take it. We got a rune of the something, rather. Blessing of thorns. It hurts people that hurt us. I like that. I accept that. Because people that hurt me, they get no quarter. Their day at the arcade shall be wanting. I don't know if I can blast my way through right there, so I'm just going to keep on trucking and going as rapidly as I can. Oh, this is the worst spot ever to get trapped by enemies. Yeah. If an AI decides to get me down here, I am really, really, really screwed in many, many new ex and exciting cherry-flavored ways. Alright, buddy. Normally I wouldn't mess with you right now, but you're kind of in the way, so I need you to go. I'm gonna grab that lightning orb on the way by. Definitely gonna buy a yellow potion, because why not? And then we've got a shieldy thing over here. What does that do? Oh, my arrows just fly straight now? Okay. It's an interesting, fun little modification that I think I can live with. Give me all the gem rolls. What does a golden skull do? Probably does something awesome, doesn't it? It's got to do something badass. It's a golden skull. When charged, golden skull attacks nearby targets, dealing 20 damage a hit. That's pretty solid. That's acceptable. Also got a spiked ring, which is going to go on my finger. Hopefully the spikes are on the outside and on the inside. There was a bit of ambiguity in that regard on the brochure. Eh, probably going to leave that alone. Yeah, I think you're supposed to go quickly. That might be my problem with why I'm getting killed so much. Because I like to take my time, drag my feet, and just be like, oh, This dungeon is for explode. Oh, we made it to a new biome. Yay. That's new for me. Normally, I die horribly in these places. Oh, shit balls. We got new enemies. Oh my god! There's no fall damage, so I'm getting the hell out of here. Ah! I don't think fighting is an option on that one. There was a lot of enemies, and if any of the AI showed up, we were about to be in severely deep dookie. We were about to have a really, really rough day. There's a gold nugget on a shelf up there. Don't put the gold on a shelf. They are just rushing me right now. I'm going to eat that apple, and then I got a tart that'll give me 15 and some max health, so I'll take it. Whew. No enemies, no. Leave me alone, you with your damage on touch. Yeah, I'm dead now. There might be an overstocking of enemies on that one. But yeah, if you like the game, if you like what you saw so far, the game is called Cave Blazers. I think the furthest I've made it is down to like floor 5 or 6. I've gotten a score of like 800 or 900, 700, somewhere in there. I don't remember, probably on the lower end in all honesty, but it's a very fire and forget little platform game. It's very early in its development. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of balancing changes. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to move around with this game before it finalizes and reaches its iteration. It's coming out this week on Steam. If you wanted to check it out, I'll have a link for you down below. I do feel like the things that are important to a platforming game are in there. Now, it's just dots and tittles and items and things need to be added, little aesthetic differences and things of that nature. I think they've definitely got a solid chance of making themselves a cool little game that'll run on the heels of Agante and Spelunky and all that kind of stuff but with maybe a little bit more speed and action so if you wanted to get cave blazers got the link for you down below this is weekly any newcomer if you've never been to the channel before my name is Splattercat. I do a show every single week where I take a look at an indie game that a developer has sent on over to have a look at it. If I particularly like the game, I go ahead and I make an episode about it. It's your little one-off series at the end of the week. This week was called Cave Blazers. If you wanted another one or you didn't particularly like this selection, let me know in the comments down below. I'll have another one for you next week on Saturday. Bye everybody. How you do out there?